Merry Christmas, everybody. Welcome to the House Church video, a very festive House Church video as we round the corner into the home stretch towards Christmas. It is up week, so make sure as you're meeting, aside from talking about the service, that you're also remembering to pray for and think about inviting people that don't yet know Jesus to church. Carols by Candlelight is on the horizon, and that's a great entry point for them in this season. Last week, we looked at the text where Teenage Mary unleashes this revolutionary poem about the ramifications of this baby that has sort of suddenly appeared in her belly. And my question about that text is, that thing is revolutionary. I don't know if I said it on, on Sunday or not, but there's actually been some countries in history where you haven't been allowed to read that text out loud because it's about overthrowing governments. It's about the poor getting money. It's about the hungry getting fed and that all being the will of God. So if God wants that, why are we suffering under these, these monstrous powers that are keeping us down? So you get this revolutionary song that is at the center of Christmas and why are we all like, fa la 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 or rum pum 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 rum pum 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 it's like Jesus has got this incredible revolution happening and we're like, oh, aren't you just the cutest thing, Jesus? My question is, how did we miss it? What Christmas is about. My light bulb moment is that I think part of why we missed it is that we do not understand really what love coming down at Christmas means or what Jesus' act at Christmas of love means. We take love and we sentimental, sentimentalize it. <laughs> I said it right, but awkwardly. We, we soften love, we domesticate love, we make it like decorating love. Like, I love your house, I love your decorating, or I love Connor McDavid, or whatever. There's just different kinds of love, but there's the love that Mary's talking about at Christmas that's very different. It's like a gutsy love. It's a love that has skin in the game. It's a love that is only expressed, not when it transforms the people that receive it, although it does. It's the kind of love that transforms the person who's giving it. That's the kind of love that we see at Christmas, when Jesus actually changes who he is, when Mary's form changes because of the love that she's about to express. So that's the kind of love that if you want to be changed, you need to start expressing that kind of love. So my light bulb moment is like, we miss it because we don't understand just how deep and almost how threatening to our status quo love is. My conviction is that if you want to be transformed, you actually have to love that way. So we want to experience God. We want to make a difference. We want to leave a legacy. We want to be loving, but in fear, just loving in these superficial ways that don't involve your own transformation your own sacrifice, then you're gonna miss out on all those things. So my conviction out of all of what we talked about on Sunday is to just simply not turn away. If I notice somebody who is suffering, somebody who is on the margins, somebody who is lonely, and if I see it, I need to take responsibility for it. I don't even think I necessarily need to go looking for it. I think the Lord in his kindness to me wants to give me opportunities to grow in love. He's gonna bring plenty of it my way and plenty of it your way, and my conviction is that when I see it as a Christian, somebody who celebrates the deeper meaning of Christmas, I celebrate that deeper meaning by not turning away. Grace and peace, everybody, and again, remember Carols by Candlelight coming out. Why don't you like invite 10 people and maybe two show up, and those two have their family trees potentially changed. Uh, pretty good use of your time and courage to invite people. Have a great week.